Hi there, my name is Nicole Young, and in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can use Luminar 4's brand new AI sky replacement tool to replace a sky, and then I'm going to show you how you can also add that same sky as a reflection in water. Let's go ahead and get to it. So with this raw file, I've already made a few basic adjustments. I made a few white balance adjustments and also used some of those other tonal sliders to kind of bring out some of the details inside of that mountain and the trees. I added a touch of the AI accent filter just to kind of boost some of that brightness and contrast. And then I also used the denoise slider to remove some of that uh, luminosity grain. And if I zoom in, it's not quite as noisy as it looks like in that kind of backed out preview, um, but there was a little bit of noise and I just wanted to get rid of a tiny bit of it. The photo was a little bit underexposed, so you tend to get a little bit more grain and noise when that happens. And so here's what the image looked like before, and then this is that after image. So this is what I'm going to be working with as my starting point. To get to the AI sky replacement tool, I need to go over to the very far right toolbar and click on that creative category. Then I'll go ahead and activate the sky replacement panel. Now once you open this, you have a dropdown where you actually can choose one of the default skies inside of Luminar. Now a lot of these are going to work quite well for most situations. However, when you want to actually add a reflection in the water, you won't really be able to use these default skies because you also need to have the image file of the sky that you want to use for your sky replacement. And the reason for that is that we're not actually using this panel when we add the reflection in the water. We're going to be doing that manually using layers and masking. And another thing you're going to want to have with your image is a photograph that has a blank sky, or kind of a, a sky with no clouds or with really flat gray clouds. And the reason for that is that you just don't want to have that in your reflection because this technique that I'm showing here won't work if you have uh, like a, let's say a blue sky with puffy white clouds. If that was in the reflection, this technique's not going to work. So it's best to start with kind of an image that either has like a blank blue sky or kind of a white empty sky like I have here. So I'll go ahead and reset this panel and instead of choosing one of those skies from that dropdown, I'm going to go all the way to the very bottom and I'm going to select Load Custom Sky Image. Next, I'm going to locate a sky I think will look good. And I know which one I want to use here, so I'll scroll down to it. I'm going to click on it and then select Open. And then Luminar's Sky Replacement Tool will automatically swap that sky. Now I'm going to make a few adjustments here in this panel to just kind of situate the sky a little bit better. First, I'm going to play around with the horizon position because I'd like to see some more of that brighter sky kind of towards the bottom there. So if I kind of slide it all the way to the right, I can see where the bottom of it drops off. And then I'll kind of move it back and just find a good spot for that sky. I'm also going to go down to the bottom. And if you don't see this section down here, you want to make sure that you've toggled those advanced settings. I'm going down to the sky temperature and I'm just going to make it a little bit more cool to fit a little bit better with the, the kind of the scene and the time of day. And I think I might also add a touch of the atmospheric haze, which if I were to slide this all the way to the right, it really just kind of starts to fade and haze out that sky, which is, is a good feature if you really want something to match your existing image. If you have a photo that has a little bit of a haze to it already, a really dramatic and contrasty sky is not going to fit well with your scene. So a lot of these tools are just going to help you kind of mesh that new sky in with your existing photograph. I'm also going to go down to that sky exposure and just drop it just a little bit to make it a little bit darker. And now if I toggle this on and off, we can see that before and after difference of only that sky being replaced there. Now I'm ready to actually add that reflection to the water. To do that, I need to go over to the Layers panel. So I'm going to click on Layers, then I'll click on that plus icon, and I'm going to add a new image layer. Now for this image layer, I need to add the exact same sky that I added to the Sky Replacement tool. So I have that selected there. I'll go ahead and click Open. The first thing I'm going to do here is drop my image opacity, and this is really only a temporary adjustment. I do this so it's a lot easier for me to see where I'm placing the sky because I have to do some transformation to it in the next step. So now I'll go ahead and click on Layer Transform inside of that Layers panel. 
And once I do that, kind of a new scene pops up here, giving me tools to make those adjustments. So there are really only two things I need to do in this setup. I need to flip the image, and then I also need to reposition it so it's covering up that water properly. So I'll go over to these tools on the top. I'm gonna flip it vertically, and then I'm gonna click and drag. And I'm basically, I'm looking to see how much I can match up what I have up here with what's going on right down here. And so I'm kind of just eyeballing it. I'm looking at this top kind of curved cloud at the top there, and I'm just seeing about where I can place it inside of that reflection. And then I just need to uh, kind of stretch it out so the entire image is covering that space. And this looks like a pretty good transformation. So in the top right, I'm gonna click Done. Next, I'm going to mask the image. So I'm gonna go down to that Edit Mask dropdown, click on it, and select Brush. My goal here is to brush away anything in that sky layer that is not the water. So this is going to be that reflection of the mountain and some of those trees. So up in the top toolbar, I'm going to click on Erase. I'm gonna increase my brush size a little bit. And I'm just going to start brushing away that area. I just want to kind of have a nice feathered edge there on my brush too, so I get a nice soft transition between the masked and unmasked areas. While you're masking, if you'd like to preview what that mask looks like, uh, you can click on that eyeball at the top there and it will give you an idea. I don't need to worry about all of this area at the top. Uh, basically, the red portion means that the image is going to be showing through, uh, but there is no image here to show through. It's just showing that because that area is not actually masked. So I'm gonna hide that preview, maybe make a few subtle adjustments. And of course, the great thing about masking is I can always go back and make more edits, but I think this is a pretty good starting point. So I'm gonna go ahead and click Done at the top. Now I'm gonna go back to my Layers panel. I'm going to bring that image opacity all the way back to 100%, and now I'm going to blend this with my image. Oftentimes when I am doing sky replacements with reflections, I tend to use Overlay or Soft Light. These are a little bit too bright for this scene though. Uh, you can always hover over all of the different blending modes to see which ones you like best, but I'm thinking that Multiply is probably gonna work best for this scene. So I'm gonna select that one, and I'm just gonna toggle this layer on and off just to kind of get a good idea of how things are looking. And one thing I'm noticing is that there's a little bit of a halo here, and that's some of that existing water that is showing through. So I'm gonna go back into my masking mode and I'm going to brush some of that back. So I'll go back up to Edit Mask and select Brush once again. But instead of erasing, this time I'm going to paint. So I'm going to click on Paint at the top, and I'm just going to kind of use just that feathered part to kind of cover up some of that, and I'll just kind of go through some of the other parts of the image too. And I'll go ahead and click Done when I'm finished. Now that I have that reflection added, I still want to make a few more adjustments to kind of make it look a little bit more realistic with the photograph. So first I'm gonna play with my image opacity. I'm going to just slide it to the left. If I'm just gonna slide it all the way to the left because I wanna kind of get an idea of what that, uh, that kind of that line between the mast areas and the non-mast areas are. And I think something at around 70 or so is going to look good for this photo. Of course, this is always going to be a little bit different. Your image may need it at 100% opacity or maybe you wanna slide it all the way down to a much lower setting. I'm also going to make a few image adjustments to this layer. So I have that layer active. I'm gonna click on the Essentials tab, and I'm gonna go into Details Enhancer. I don't want to increase the details or sharpen anything. Instead, I wanna do the opposite. So I'm gonna take each of these detail slider and move it to the left of somewhere about halfway. And I'm gonna to toggle that on and off to see what that did. And it basically just blurred the sky a little bit. I'm not going to be able to replicate any of the ripples in the water, but having it be a little bit blurred does help kind of blend it with that water a little bit better. Now I'm gonna go back over to my layers panel and I just wanna to toggle this layer on and off to get an idea of how things are looking. And I'm noticing again that right here, this part of the mountain looks a little too dark. So I'm gonna go back into my mask settings and see if I can uh, kind of fix that a little bit. So I'm gonna to wanna to make sure that I'm erasing, but this time, instead of having the opacity 100%, I'm gonna drop it down 
to about 20%. Then I'm going to reduce my brush size and I'm using my left bracket key to do that. And then I'm just going to kind of slowly, carefully brush over that top part. It's just making a very subtle adjustment, but I'm basically just trying to remove some of that darkness, that dark halo, uh, which is kind of coming through from that sky. And I think that looks good, so I'll go ahead and click Done. And I'll toggle that once again to see what that sky replacement has done, and I think that's looking pretty good. Now lastly, after you've added a new image into a photograph, such as the sky replacement or any type of composite work, it's oftentimes good practice to add more adjustments to the photo to kind of blend everything together. And inside of Luminar, the best way to do that is by using an adjustment layer. So in the layers panel, I'm gonna click on that plus icon and select add new adjustment layer. Now any of the adjustments I add to this layer will affect all of the layers below, including the reflected sky and my original DNG file with all of those other edits added to it. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to add a look. So I'm gonna click on the looks button at the top, which then reveals a film strip at the bottom containing all of those looks. I'm gonna click on the looks category and select landscape. And I'm going to select deep sky. That did a pretty good job of kind of boosting the colors and the blues, but I would like to subdue it just a little bit. So I'm gonna take that adjustments amount slider and just slide it to the left and I'm setting it there at about 60%. If I toggle that on and off, you can see it's adding a nice subtle effect but I'd also like to add one more adjustment to this. And to do that, I'm gonna go over to the creative category, and then I'm gonna go down to film grain. First, I'm gonna zoom in so you can kind of see what things look like. Adding film grain can be helpful when doing composite work because each photograph is going to have kind of its own quality of grain and noise in the photo. So I like to add a touch of film grain just to kind of bring everything together. Now I'm gonna keep in mind also that this entire adjustment setting is down to about 60%. So what I'm going to add here is going to be a little bit subdued. So I'm going to start off with a pretty high number and I normally wouldn't increase it that much at the beginning, but doing that gives me the opportunity to kind of scale it back and find a little bit better setting. So right now it's just under 20. If I toggle this on and off, you can see that now it's adding film grain and it's adding it to the entire image. So that new sky that I added with the sky replacement, the reflected sky, and then of course the main image as well. And after I've zoomed this out a little bit, I notice that there's still a little bit of a halo sitting there underneath that mountain and that reflection. And I'm just gonna really quickly go back to it. Uh, so I'm going back to that layers panel, jumping back into that sky image. I'm gonna edit my mask real quickly. Sometimes this just takes a little bit of back and forth, you know, to really get kind of that really good look that you're going for. I'm gonna make sure that I'm painting. I have that opacity at 20%, so I'm gonna boost it up to about 50%, and then I'm just going to brush back over that, because that would have bothered me if I left it there. I think I'd rather have a little bit of dark parts in that top of that mountain than be able to actually see that water. Let's go back up to that top adjustment layer and now let's see how everything looks all together.